Welcome to a new series on my channel called Spooky Summer Reads. My name's Danny, and I have the attention span of like a squirrel, so I've been having trouble like sticking through movies lately and finishing them, but I have no trouble finishing books, so I wanted to share that in some way, shape, or form here on my channel. And today I have a little bit of a mocktail going on. I have some sparkling water, crushed cranberries, lemon thyme from the garden, and a little bit of lime juice and agave. Lately, I've been in the mood for a creepy story, but with a coastal setting, hence Spooky Summer Reads. And I feel like with thriller books, even in the blistering heat of summer, they just feel so cozy. So today's book review is going to be on Riley Sager's newest release, The Only One Left. I was very, very excited when I first found out about this book release because I heard that the setting was going to be in coastal Maine on a cliffside in a decaying mansion. I love it, I love it. You can see on the hardcover sleeve that the art depicts that setting very well. You have the house, the mansion on the cliff with the waves crashing underneath. And I really love how the cover is kind of reminiscent of an 80s horror movie poster. I thought that was really cool because it also takes place present day in the 80s with flashbacks to the 1920s. And I'll read you the text on the inside cover here. There's a schoolyard chant that is like kind of in between the summary of it. Um, so I'll just skip that, but you can definitely look it up. Now reduced to a schoolyard chant, the Hope family murder shocked the Maine coast one bloody night in 1929. While most people assume 17-year-old Lenora was responsible, the police were never able to prove it. Other than her denial after the killings, she has never spoken publicly about that night, nor has she set foot outside Hope's End, the cliffside mansion where the massacre occurred. It's now 1983, and home health aide Kit McDear arrives at a decaying Hope's End to care for Lenora after her previous nurse fled in the middle of the night. In her 70s and confined to a wheelchair, Lenora has rendered mute by a series of strokes and can only communicate with Kit by tapping out sentences on an old typewriter. One night, Lenora uses it to make a tantalizing offer. I want to tell you everything. As Kit helps Lenora write about the events leading to the Hope family massacre, it becomes clear that there's more to the tale than people know. But when new details about her predecessor's departure come to light, Kit starts to suspect Lenora might not be telling the complete truth and that the seemingly harmless woman in her care could be far more dangerous than she first thought. For those who like gothic mysteries, thrillers, if you liked Verity by Colleen Hoover, this has a little bit of aspect of that sandwiched in. I'm not going to get into spoilers or anything like that, but definitely a better, not better, but a different feel and backstory compared to Verity. Way different story, just there's, there's one little thing. There's one little thing and there's awesome parallels between the main characters, two of them specifically, in this book, which are really cool to kind of go back and forth with. Riley Sager actually has some pages in the back of the book where he kind of shares what he was inspired by when he wrote this. And one was something I'm not familiar with. It's another novel um, called The Fall of the House Usher. And he also talks about how it kind of started with the Lizzie Borden murders and then not written in here, but really kind of shared by a lot of people who have read this book say that it's kind of reminiscent of Agatha Christie and then there were none because it's like a whodunit at any second of the book you're kind of like I don't know who it is it switches like where you think it's one person and then you're back to thinking it's another person and Riley Sager really does a great job of tricking your mind with a lot of twists and turns that's what I have to say about this book tons of twists if you love twists and thrillers this is a really gothic mystery type of th thriller um, that has a lot of twists, a lot of twists, almost too many. At Towards the end, I, the one negative thing I would have to say about this book is towards the end, I almost questioned if it was too many twists because I was like, does this almost go over the line of unbelievable because there's just so many placed twists towards the end all together. But ultimately, 
I definitely think it's a five star read and I usually don't do five star reviews on uh, Goodreads or anything like that because I'm like, oh, it takes a lot. But I would definitely recommend The Only One Left. I just love the kind of throwback um, feel of it. I really like um, a lot of Riley Sager's settings in his books being like kind of mansions and manors and describing architecture. Gothicism, super high tension book that kept me turning the pages. And speaking of pages, this book is 382 pages as far as the story goes. Compared to the last book I read by this author, which was The House Across the Lake, which I think it was his like besides this one, the most recent one, the one before this, House Across the Lake, it ended with a twist, but the twist was like very out of left field. And I know it's very polarizing. Some people liked it, some people didn't like it. I really wasn't sure about it. I felt like it was a little unbelievable. And this book just blows House Across the Lake out of the water with believable, real twists it was like very high tension very suspenseful and would definitely recommend especially if you're looking for a coastal spooky gothic summer read you should definitely check out the only one left by riley sager and i'm no pro i'm no i don't know i really just got deep into reading and psychological thrillers and thrillers and horror novels somehow uh, engage me the most so I hope to share some more with you here on this channel I'm currently reading let's pull it up The Vanishing Hour by Serafina Nova Glass which also takes place in coastal Maine and it's I think a woman who runs an inn in Rock Harbor Maine an isolated inn again like in cliffs water <laughs> There's a theme going on here, and that's definitely what I want to be involved in in summer reading. I wanted to say that I do also find it so interesting how people can have such different opinions and reviews of the same exact book. It just like resonates so differently for every type of person's unique mind. So what were your thoughts on The Only One Left by Riley Sager? I want to know. Leave them in the comments down below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Do you want to read it? I'll leave a link to the book in the description box down below um, so you can go grab the book if you'd like and I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching this video supporting my channel giving the video a thumbs up subscribing to my channel a lot of the books that I read also inspire me within my business if you don't know I am the owner of Amber and Oak I make natural soy wax candles and a lot of them have like a bookish feel to them so if you're interested in checking that out I will also leave the link down below to my candles I have one of my fall ones burning right now. I'm dropping things. Whoops, I think it's time to go. I think I'm making this outro a little long. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.